This is the final video in a three video series showing how I designed and constructed a router cabinet that is built into the extension wing of my table saw. In the first video, I covered the cabinet carapace construction, the electrical wiring, and the dust port installation. And in the second video, I covered the design and construction of the drawers and swinging cabinet door. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you may want to check them out before watching this one. I'll put a link to both videos in the description below. In this video, I'll show how I built the melamine cabinet top with built-in router plate insert and how I installed the entire cabinet into the extension wing of my table saw. The insert I have is made by Rousseau and cost about 45 bucks on Amazon when I bought it. All right, let's get started. The top surface of the cabinet is made from a piece of three quarter inch thick melamine and there's a pine edge banding around the outside. The edge banding is the same thickness as the melamine and is one inch wide. I started by cutting the melamine sheet to size on my table saw, then went ahead and ripped the edge banding pieces to width while I was there. The edge banding has 45 degree mitered corners, which I cut to exact length on my miter saw. I'll glue these on later. The next step is to cut the hole for the router plate insert. After tracing the insert outline onto the center of the melamine, I cut a rough hole an inch or so inside the line with my jigsaw. Next, I installed a spiral upcut bit on my plunge router to cut to the actual trace line. I carefully set the maximum plunge depth to the thickness of the router base plate so that it would end up sitting flush with the surface. I clamped a straight piece of plywood to the edge of the melamine parallel to the pencil line at just the right distance to ensure that I got a nice straight cut. I was very careful approaching the corners of the pencil outline so as not to overshoot the end. After the outer edge of the cut was complete, I just freehand routed out the remainder of the one inch overhang. I chose an eighth inch upcut bit because its shape matches the rounded corners of the router base plate. If anything, it's better to cut slightly too deep here because you can always shim the base plate up to be flush. After a little trial and error, I was getting the base plate fitting snugly. As you can see, the underside of the base plate isn't flat. It has a quarter inch step near the edge. To account for this, I came back in with my jigsaw and reduced that one inch overhang to a quarter inch to match the base plate profile. I don't show it here, but I actually use construction adhesive to hold the plate in place. Even though it fits perfectly, when inserting the router into the plate from below, I found that I would periodically push the entire plate out of the recess. Construction adhesive fixed that right up. Check it out, a perfect fit. To finish the top, I glued the edge banding on. I used a strap clamp to initially hold it in place, and I used a lot of glue where the banding touches the exposed melamine end grain because it soaks up a lot. I also used a few clamps, but it's important not to exert too much pressure on the router plate hole, as the thin lip around the inside is quite weak and can break very easily. Now, if you remember from the last video in this series, at some point in this build I dropped my camera on the concrete and couldn't film for a few days. It was during this downtime that I actually attached the melamine top to the cabinet. So I did this with just four upward screws from within the cabinet. The idea here is that if I ever get a new router base plate or anything, I can easily just remove this melamine top and make a new one. One thing I forgot to mention in the earlier videos is that I attached some leveling feet to the four corners of the cabinet bottom. I'll include a link to those in the description as well. With the cabinet construction completed, I can remove the temporary extension wing from my saw and slide the cabinet into place. I had planned to drill some holes and bolt the cabinet into the saw, but I ended up just sliding it into place and using the adjustable feet to level all four corners of the top flush to the table saw surface. Since I never moved the saw, this has been working fine for me. I worry that if I had bolted it in, if I tried to lift the saw onto its mobile base, I might bend the rails or damage the saw because the cabinet is really heavy. If I ever need to move the saw, I can just slide the cabinet out and then move the saw. As you can see, the dust collection is incredibly effective. Basically, no dust is left on the table surface.
Since the table saw fence slides smoothly over the melamine top, I can just clamp a separate plywood router fence to the table saw fence when I need it. I actually showed how to make this fence in one of my very first videos, so I'll include a link to that below as well. And there you have it, a super cool router cabinet table made from scraps and a single sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Let me know what you think about the cabinet in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.